this program and that'll tie into what you're doing and we'll we'll talk about that and everything but it's coming up the fifth anniversary it seems it seems uh, like kind of a long time ago one way but another way it seems just like yesterday in a way that the event happened yeah so I, much I has happened since now. i think it was uh, it was such a traumatic event the 9 11 um you know catastrophe here in new york mm. but in some ways i think it's allowed people to move from the dimension of of flight to a to a more from my perspective constructive attitude of fight i i believe that fight and flight yeah and let me introduce you okay and welcome very much to conversation it's a pleasure welcome to the program frank morales frank morales has been a guest in the past and he's a dear friend of myself and the world i would say and he's very involved he's an episcopal priest and he's uh, at the St. Mark's Church at uh, 2nd Avenue and 10th uh, Street here in New York City. He's a, an activist. He's been a longtime activist concerned with the harbingers of and uh, of, a, of an emerging police state that uh, Bill Kunstler and others used to warn us about for a very long time. And he's more recently become very involved and actively so a uh, center in terms of the New York 9-11 truth movement. And with that introduction, Frank, welcome once again very much to Conversations. Well, and thank Manhattan. you very much, Al. It's great to be with you again. It's my good pleasure. Maybe we could. we got 58 minutes. We're going to talk because I know we're coming up the fifth anniversary, which is just going to be a few days after the airing of this program on the uh, 5th of September. But could you, let's back up a little bit, share your own background a little bit, if you would, please. You're an Episcopal priest, and you've been a, a, an activist for a very long time. Maybe you should go over the details of that in a, in a kind of brush, uh, broad brush way. But Well, I became uh, active, I suppose, like a lot of people back in the 60s. Yeah. I was at college from 1967 to 1971. Heady times. Which, uh, as you know, was mm. um, a good time to be in college. Mm. Um, we were on strike. This is in upstate New York at Hobart College, and where where is Hobart? Hobart's in uh, right off Lake Seneca, it's okay. in Geneva, oh. New York. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, and we, you know, we traveled around. In those days, um, we were able to take courses in various other colleges in in, in upstate. And uh -huh. We moved around. I was uh, in a rock and roll band, and where'd you play? Studied. Uh, well, I was the lead singer in the in the in really? rock band. Oh yeah, a rock band with punk rock or uh, was it straight well, rock, rock and roll. roll. This yeah. is a, this is the era of rock and roll. Do you still get up and uh, jam? Oh and yeah, we yeah. still play. Yeah, Do I you mean, still uh, sure you ever gig you know. or anything like that? Uh, you not still, not, a lead not coming up, but yeah. uh, you know I might get back into that. All right, yeah, um, yeah. Good but, training. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was yeah. good training. Yeah. <laughs> but it was very active time, and my um, my predicament in, in like a lot of people at that point a lot of uh, men yeah. was that we were facing a draft yeah and not uh, to mention a, a horrendously immoral war yeah. over in east asia yeah. yeah i was uh i was young but i was part of the student mobilization movement at yeah. that time mm -hmm. and uh i was i had applied as a conscientious objector and my chaplain durston mcdonald an episcopal chaplain was uh, sort of helping me through these my CO application. Yeah, it's hard. It's difficult. Oh, yeah. it's quite yeah. involved. A lot of uh, decision making and yeah, yeah, you know. But I was determined uh, there was no way in the world I was going to go, you know, shoot and kill other people who I I had not no particular beef with and uh -huh. have them shoot at me. It seemed irrational. Still, Ain't no Viet Cong ever called me a revolutionary. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> yes, you right. know. So in any case, um, make a long story short, they uh, they uh, instituted this kind of lottery. It yeah, wasn't actually, it wasn't so much of a lot. It was like a, like a, a, you know, luck of the draw. Yeah. They put your name in a basket and they, yeah. they twisted it around on primetime TV. Yes, it's like and the lotto, was, right? Yeah, we all <laughs> yeah, sat there yeah, and yeah, watching yeah. TV. I'll never forget it. Yeah, right. Room full of students. Can this and be real? Yes. People's lives were sort of yeah. being destroyed right then and there. And right. uh, but I fortunately, my number didn't come up. I see, yeah. So my, my application for conscient, conscientious objector never became, uh, it wasn't a requirement. Okay. Because my number Never uh, didn't come up. Yeah, right. So right. that was that. But I, it, it put me on a road. I was a philosophy and theology major. Mm -hmm. um, put me on a road towards uh, a, a vocation that that mixed up spiritual, religious sensibility concerns, philosophical concerns, um, with social activism. Were you 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 were coming out of a histor? Uh, your your early was a Catholic, and you went to Episcopalian. I was raised Catholic on yeah. on, uh, on Avenue D on the Lower East Side in Manhattan here, uh -huh. um, but I don't pretend to suggest that I was in any way a religious person. Okay, uh, I okay. dropped out of Catholic, uh, you know, Catholic. I stopped going to church mm. as soon as I was uh, out of my, you know. Mother's grasp, yeah. pretty uh, much. <laughs> mother's grasp, uh, you know. Sunday school, yeah. 
So, yeah. I mean, it wasn't so much that, but I think it, it did in, in, it kind of inculcate within me a sense that um, of right and wrong, yeah. and a sense that the spiritual values uh, were ultimate, and that, you know, that beneath all this, uh, you know, that, that the, 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 the violence in the world uh -huh. was, such, was so much of a, w was an illusion, or was not so much an illusion, but was a shimmer. Yeah, that behind yeah. that yeah. was, was like the real joy of neighborliness and right. love and cooperation and all that. It was I just a question a of dealing with this violence. Right. I think it's a really good take on things. So you it gave me a, sa a strength, right. um, you know, it, as I kind of grew older yeah. and I saw a vocation within the priesthood right. as really the only place to go. It wasn't yeah. like I was so much called, although that became more operative for me later mm -hmm. in the sense of calling. But really, it was seemed like a natural thing for me to do, get to be involved in a spiritual uh, slash uh, political activist right. kind of a lifestyle. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, a lot of, a lot of we had Malcolm, we had right. Martin Luther Malcolm. King, uh, right. all coming from this kind of amalgam of spirit and, and political activism. We also had Tahar de Chardin, who had a philosophical exactly. thing, or we had liberation theology. Later we on, had liberation the, the, theology. Li the uh, Vatican II, Vatican or there, II. there was a spirit in the air, and yeah. there liberation theology particularly, and then that, that was yeah. kind of heavy duty yeah. part it of the made, it made it zeitgeist. Yeah. yeah, it was for me, it was, well, it, it, it was common sense that that, uh, or it, from from my perspective, anyway, that Jesus was a revolutionary. Yeah, I think Jesus, he was. Well, he was, he money was crucified as an insurrectionist. Yeah, right. Um, he was a friend of the poor, although he was he sat down with everybody. Yeah. That's kind of what I liked about him. He wasn't uh -huh. sectarian in that way. He, uh -huh. he sat down with everybody, and he he dealt directly with people's hearts. He Don't you heart think heart. most of our spiritual leaders, whether it's Buddha or or whatever, or Jesus or anything, they all sort of, in a certain set, had a similarity in terms of me. Uh, care for the least among us and sure. so forth. And yeah. these have been roundly ignored by our political or s s uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, secular leaders down through the ages. They've not really listened to the ages because it's all geared toward uh, the complete opposite in terms everything is served by those who are already powerful. Yeah, well, I in think almost every political economy in the world. Of course, because yeah. I mean, I think in what some respects, the, the liberation of the poor implies the liberation of the rich, implies a, a reconstituting of the entire system. Right. That the, the whole arrangement um, in which that there are poor. That seems to me like a really good idea, a whole rearrangement of the whole system. That's it's something what's that's called for, almost required, yeah. I think, now. I yeah. think that, you know, the, the work that I'm involved in now, which yeah. is this 9-11 truth right. uh, movement, I think that, in a sense, is, um, you know, to the extent that we're able to push forward uh, the truth of 9-11, right. namely okay. that the official story is a lie, uh -huh. um, and that uh, elements within our own government and our intelligence community were involved in orchestrating setting up, letting happen, whichever work, uh, happen semantics here. works yeah. for you, uh -huh. um, that there's a lot more to this than meets the eye. But that movement of truth, 9-11 yeah. truth, take uh -huh. the 9-11 out right. and generalize it in terms of a movement of truth. Right. Then we begin to get at what is in fact, I think, the potential for more generalized <laughs> movement. Um, you can call it a revolutionary movement, but I think the idea of a truth movement, almost in the Gandhian truth. sense, okay, yeah. is something that that I hope becomes more extent, more generalized right. in, in the future now. Because accountability or, or accountability, or a sense of human responsibility to right. one another. Transparency. Uh, open, open it up. Yeah. Uh, th this we have the whole planet in our hands. Yeah. The people need to come, come, step forward and take responsibility for for what's going on around us. All this evil that that is taking place, this right. violence. We, in a sense, allow it to perpetuate. We allow for it to the extent that we, we remain uh, passive. Right. And if we, you know, if we, this, this idea of, s of, of not only seeking the truth, but seeking justice, which comes a, a about as a result of the exposure of this, of this truth. Mm -hmm. Because as we say in the 9-11 truth movement, truth is not enough. We don't, we don't only want to deconstruct the official uh, cover story of 9-11, nine, of nine 19 oh, right. hijackers, uh. Uh, box cutters yeah. outwitting the most uh, vast, uh, um, you know, well yeah, financed a serendipitous intelligence. happenstance. Yeah, the massive incompetence theory. Everybody mm. decided to go home that day. Yeah. NORAD shut down. Yeah. Uh, uh, dozens of forewarnings just uh, happened. disregarded. Yeah. It just happened. Yeah. Of course, it, it, it helped to rationalize the invasions <coughs> of Afghanistan and Iraq and all the rest. Bush, every other day, 
relates to 9-11. Uh, we're doing this because of 9-11. We're doing that because of 9-11. It's the linchpin. Yeah, redolent of the Reichstag burning in Germany exactly. in 1933. It's a pretext. And by 1937, he had a 97% approval for a fascist state. Yeah, well, people... With a lot of legislation, it looks a lot like the legislation that's been advanced in our Congress. Of course. And much of which has gotten into place. It's, it's and an old story. And you've been against this idea of an emerging police state. And this cover story on 9-11 has been perfect for them to build it fits what right could in. wheat right into a, a police state. It fits right in. And fits into your long-term commitment right. against injustice, right? The police state, mm. which, uh, you know, we can summarize in terms of the militarization of the police, the breakdown of the separation between the police and the military domestically Comitatus, as institutions. Right, the erosion of posse comitatus yeah, law and all dangerous. that. That's dangerous. When we ask, well, there is this 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 evolution of a police state apparatus yeah. in, in America. Bill I don't Consular think it can be denied. It. Yeah. You know, yeah. the Patriot Act, the repression. People see this now. Yeah. But you ask the more basic question, well, why? Mm -hmm. Why is this police state taking place? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that the, 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 the rulers, the powers, the, the elite, the, one, the movers and the shakers at the top, the ones in control who are out of control, mm -hmm. they have an agenda which is to take over the, 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 the resources, the oil particularly, uh, take over land. Mm -hmm. It's really about that. They want to seize various parts of the world, build bases there, defend it, they put have the Chinese and the Soviet Union up against the wall. Okay. You know, just, they want to yeah. be in the driver's seat. Uh -huh. They know that their movement, their, their agenda will in, engender resistance at home not to mention around the world. Right. So the police state is, in a sense, an apparatus to repress that, that resistance to their agenda that they know is coming. Uh -huh. It's tied in. In other words, the, 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 the wars abroad necessitate a war at home. Right. There's, there's oh, a relationship yeah. right. between we're the two. We're going to fight them over there rather than here. Yeah. Well, we're going to fight. We're going to do this over there. We're going to act unilaterally and pre and preemptively mm -hmm. abroad. Uh -huh. Th this is our agenda. Yeah. This is from the, they've they've been scheming this for quite a while now. Since the 70s. They know that they're going to engender resistance at home. Yeah. It's common sense. It's they like Jabotinsky in Israel, if I may. When they just started Israel, he knew there was going to be reaction from the, exactly. the Palestinian people. So instead of saying we're all going to be brothers and let's be happy and we're going to be able to do, they're not going to accept. We better get a a bunch of tanks. Exactly. Yeah, the revisionist right. view of so Zionism. So the police state, when you ask, yeah. well, why police state at home? What, what, why are they doing this? Well, they're doing this because they recognize that people here are not stupid, mm -hmm. that there's, a, there's a, a level of critical consciousness and awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people have been browbeaten and scared and so forth. Journalists have decided not to cover stories, not to, you know, not to expose. Little mm -hmm. by little now, particularly with 9-11, mm -hmm. things are beginning to bubble up. Uh -huh. There's more mainstream reporting going on. Books are coming out. Uh, credible writers are writing about this mm -hmm. this kind of material. Mm -hmm. We're seeing it now, particularly yeah. in the 9/11 movement. Right. But this is this is going to become generalized mm -hmm. because the whole thing is a lie. Mm -hmm. The 9/11 truth minute, movement exposes the, the lie of the system. The the, oh, the the whole thing is a lie, a lie. The whole the whole system by which we operate this society and our view yeah, of world society is out of touch with what's required. It's archaic. It's archaic. It's, it's an ancient regime. It's it, out of date. The whole economic system. Okay. It's based on a sense of, uh, uh -huh. take the idea of scarcity. Yeah. There's no need. I, they're storing wheat and, and various other uh, foodstuffs yeah. that are rotting away. And, yeah. and so and meanwhile, huge people are starving. To the, yeah. now there's it's all about ma maintaining the profit system, maintaining right. this, this, this unequal system. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. archaic. Yeah. And people are beginning to see that. Mm -hmm. If we can get people to the point where we understand that 9-11 was uh, its terrorism, uh, that was is condoned and orchestrated against the interests of the of the the American people and, and the interests of the people of the world in order to rationalize a, a war for oil uh -huh. and deconstruct that and deal with that uh -huh. not only in terms of truth but in terms of justice. Right, justice. See? Yeah, that's we right. We don't only want to know that these people did it. We want to bring them to 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 to, to the courts. Uh -huh. We want to uh -huh. put them in jail. We want to deal with this thing. Yeah. We want just truth's not enough. Uh -huh. We want justice. That will begin to open up the door. Yeah. That'll create a constitutional crisis uh -huh. and, uh, and so uh -huh. forth. But uh -huh. rather than looking at it negatively, yeah. look at it positively. As an opportunity. Right. It's an well, opportunity that's what I think, yeah. for the world's people, for the people of America, to uh. begin to step into real history, uh -huh. where we can begin. Or maybe to a new page in history. A new page or in history. Or some take advantage of what the zeitgeist either allows for the first time, maybe out of history or perhaps requires if we're going to, in a certain sense, what Bucky Fuller used to call, make it. Exactly. It's going to be touch and go whether we we're going to make it. We want to elevate what heretofore has been only implicit, namely the good uh, uh, feelings that people have for one another. Well, the wait sense a minute, of neighborliness yeah. and cooperation. Yeah. The things that we learned in Sunday school that were then, uh, you know, 
beaten to forget as right. we get older yeah. now, don't be realistic yeah right you can't that's expect the that will be a real face reality yeah right that's well what, we know it's not a question of facing reality we want nature. to change reality yeah right <laughs> exactly <laughs> we want to have the good side come on exactly and, but the thing is in a certain sense seems to me frankly if you look back through history and everything like that it's always been a few who rule and it was a few who rule now, and it's not only in this country, but it's in all the political economy, all the political systems of the world. You've got a few plutocrats who rule, and they meet at hotels, and they have meetings, and it serves maybe 20% or something. And the trends are, it's not serving the masses of the people, because we don't have a system that's able to bring the masses up or include the masses, and we never have had. They've been like sheep that have been led around, either coerced yeah, well, they or rule by intimidated. Force by PR campaigns and so forth, and they're just seen that way by a small group who rules, and you've got that still now, but that's no longer a model that is uh, necessary, It's not, not only necessary, it's not viable in terms of the survival of the planet. But it has worked over a long period of time, emperors of Rome, kings, and oh, so that's forth, been and what now we, we got the bankers yeah, and the feudal things. We need to look so at that. That's, pre yeah. that's prehistory. Now, what changed that makes something different than what's been the case throughout all of history? I don't know. I think in there's the modern a, experience I think in there's the zeitgeist a few things. current. I think one is that people are beginning to, their human consciousness is beginning to envelop the globe as its own. Like Chardin spoke right. of. Right. There's a yeah. global soul. Uh -huh. People are no longer uh, uh, tethered to, to a nation state, yeah. like the transnationals. Right, you right. see, it's like a dialectic. You know, <laughs> yeah. They think in global terms. Well, so do the people in terms of the global soul. Well, they're like the pirates on the open sea. There's, a, there's, there's no a, laws that they have to be contained It's what by. I call yeah. the apocalypse of peace. Oh, <laughs> right. Good there's, term. There's, yeah. a, there's a revolution taking place in which co human consciousness begins to envelop uh, and understand the possibilities for human emancipation globally. Mm -hmm. And they understand that. And they know it's just, a, it's just a matter of reaching out and grabbing it. Emancipation, liberation, perhaps? Liberation yeah. in a way. And that this is possible. No, and it's possible. And it's now possible, or it may be required, in a way that historically, that something has changed. One, one of the big things that's changed in terms of, of the c c human condition is that we've developed weapon systems that if they're to be unleashed in some spasm of uh, hatred, you know, nine, nine, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, guns of August notion or something. It apparently would mean that we can now find we've gone so clever we can now wipe out the whole species. I, I that's think an existential event that's happened within our lifetime, yeah. and it doesn't seem to be front and center enough in terms of the economy uh, of the of the agenda. Much less, what would be the opposite, or the 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 you know uh, to that destructive scenario, which is possible, is that we have an incredible exponentially increasing capability to provide for <laughs> everybody within a context exactly. that answers the ancient scourges and do not have to be constrained by our inability. We know that we can provide for everyone of a system and the political economic systems coming out of history won't allow us to do what we're capable collectively right. doing for everybody and ecologically and so forth. And it's sort of schizophrenia, and I think that's catching up it's catching with the up. leaders without a vision that allows that to happen right. and a sense of paranoia about these masses that are going to cut off their it's head like they did the with Louis the Sixteenth. It's time for the people to take control. I think so. It's time you? for yeah. people to understand that, that what we're dealing with is an archaic arrangement, uh -huh. um, that it's an arrangement that even those people who perpetuate it in terms of what you're getting at, the, the military-industrial complex and what used to be called mutual assured destruction, or MAD. MAD. I mean, people who have the, Still the, there. the gall to label mm -hmm. the system MAD and they're pur the purveyors of this system, mm -hmm. I mean, this is a pathology. Uh -huh. This is a sickness, this is an illness. Well, it happened with, uh, if we had only stayed contained, but damn it, 1905, along comes Albert Einstein with a special theory of relativity, there's no an inflection point. There's and no it's utility in, in having a system that's based on a symbiosis between profit-making and making armaments of destruction. Okay. The more, yeah. the more profits you get th that are derived from armaments of disruption, uh, disruption and just fuels this, uh, this greed, uh -huh. That's a that's a recipe for disaster, right. and that's what we're beginning to see. Mm -hmm. And what's now happening? And you're getting you're getting you're getting a reaction by those that are in charge of things that is almost um, out of touch. I mean, it's very it's almost like well, they psychotic. have no they have no imagination. Y yeah, okay. You have to realize right. these people are closed-minded, uh, you know, by definition. Mm -hmm. 
their 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 agenda is about profit making, is about maintaining the ship of state, maintaining their power, uh, maintaining stay their the privilege, course, yeah. stay the course, yeah. and so on and so forth. They're blinded by their greed. And they think they have a system that applies for the world in the same way that a lot of the colonial masters that colonized the world for the last 500 years thought they were bringing civilization to those benign people. I don't even people. think these people. I don't think the Bushes and the Pearls and the Wolfowitzes and the ones who are hidden behind them, the bankers you don't think and the they old guys. A, I don't think they have a clue. Okay. I think they're functioning uh, basically in terms of the what they know, uh -huh. um, right. and they're mm -hmm. just moving along. And now, you know, it's maybe it's a question of generation. As generations m uh, move, uh, you know, they're moved out, and other generations moved in. That things uh -huh. are, will evolve in, in a better way. Right. But we're coming now to a contingency, a situation where we need, like, you know, global warming is a good metaphor, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of metaphors. Yes, right. Um, just human consciousness and human awareness, mm -hmm. truth. Mm -hmm. People begin to understand that the, the, their, their life is a false life, that we're living um, in, a, in, a, in a world, in a situation, we come into our, to this world, we're inculcated with certain values, yeah. regardless of what right. traditions we come out right, of, right, 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 to care for one another and so forth, uh, we're instinctually we feel this way. Soldiers are taught to kill because they don't instinctually want to kill another person. Right. You know, this has been right. shown over and over again Absolutely. in various wars and uh, 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 firing. Even uh, out of Iraq now, they're getting records. all kinds of uh, breakdowns of psyches People break all down. over the exactly. place. Sure, absolutely. So Not to mention Agent Orange and whatnot from yeah. Vietnam and depleted when uranium and whatnot. When we get in touch with our, our true selves mm -hmm. and begin to recognize the truth of who we are, mm -hmm. and what's more importantly, begin to recognize our, uh, our power. Mm -hmm. Um, then we're going to begin to see change. And that's what I've seen within the 9-11 Truth Movement. Okay, and you've been involved with that 9-11. You're coming out of a long history of uh, concern with social justice, and, and, and they tie together. You've been involved with that for a couple of years now when you picked up. It's been yeah. five years. We're coming up to the fifth anniversary yeah. of this thing that happened downtown. Yeah. And well, uh, you got picked up a couple of years ago. I know Les is involved, Les Jameson. Well, let me back others. up a little bit. Yeah, I please. was asked to do last rites at Ground Zero. You were. Um, uh -huh. The cathedral, St. John the Divine, here I'm an Episcopal priest. They yeah. called me up about a week after 9-11 okay. uh, uh -huh. and said, would I, be, would I go and perform last rites there? Of course, like everyone at that point, well, a lot of us, yeah. you wanted to do something. Of course. Yeah. So I said, yeah, I'm there. Just mm -hmm. tell me where, you know, where yeah. do I go? Yeah. So I did a couple of nights, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shifts. Okay. And I've written this up if people search my name and Ground Zero, yeah. which is a title of a, a brief essay that I wrote about that experience. At that time and out of your feelings then at that yeah, time? Just yeah, just basically what I saw, what I witnessed, you know, it was uh -huh. it was overwhelming. Uh -huh. But there was a real moral lesson there Yes. Okay. Um, that came out of that for me. Right. But in any case, one of the things that um, I noticed there, and this gets into some of the, some of the what led me to the 9-11 Truth Movement uh -huh. uh, um, uh, uh, activity yeah. was that I, I was struck by the fact that there were no desks, no computers, no debris. Amongst all the Yeah, troopers. I remember when I first got there. Yeah, I was And I never looked around there. and I saw, like I expected, five, six, seven stories worth of junk. Junk. Or stuff, yeah, right, right. And there was nothing. Everything was reduced to powder. Really? To fine yeah. dust. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. I remember not having any awareness of, like, uh, now we talk in terms of controlled demolition. Yeah. Because uh, I saw Kevin Ryan, okay. who's a, f uh, a former underwriter for uh, the insurance companies that were dealing with some of this stuff, has written a series of papers now. I, I su suggest people look his name Kevin up. Kevin Ryan. R Y A N? Controlled demolition. Okay. I've come to uh, understand Are they linked at your site? Yeah. Okay, they they brought these buildings down uh -huh. to control demolition. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And there's ample evidence for that. Uh -huh. And uh, Kevin Ryan, Stephen Jones, and some others deconstructed not Ray only Griffith. the official story yeah. of the collapse, uh, you know, these buildings collapsed, the steel yeah. frame buildings had never in the history of steel frame buildings yeah. collapsed due to fire. Right. Um, we had three that day, yeah. including World Trade Center 7, Which that wasn't no hit by a plane, plane. Yeah. Um, right yeah. into its own footprint, mm -hmm. like a house of cards. Mm -hmm. I, I went there that, that night and I noticed and I, it was all dust and you what happened to everything. You made a point of that, the, right? The yeah, it just debris, was yeah. coming, you know, you got there and you just uh, noticed it and the fireman said to me, he said, yeah, all the bodies of the dead are ground up in this, uh, in this soil, dust in the right? Uh, Did you know that till this day, 1,200 people, roughly 1,200 people are unaccounted for? No, I didn't realize 1, that. 1,200 people really? are unaccounted for. Some of the people, and, and uh, the NIST report, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology and FEMA, who did uh, you know the the, uh, the collapse uh, uh, cover story, yeah. how this building uh, these buildings collapse and so forth, um, 
they talk in terms of the vaporizing of people. Did you know that some of the first responders had the DNA of some of the victims in their blood? Uh, really? Right. So now think about it. Yeah. Most of the victims are above where the planes hit. Right. That's that's right. that's, that's right. Up that's a lot of the people escape and yeah. they're yeah. they're above. So you have this build Cancer, these buildings yeah. collapse. Uh -huh. How do we explain uh, 1,200 people vaporized? In a, I, in a I collapse scenario, which is what the government wants to give us, and these people are above the the collapsed floors, nonetheless. Well, this is you'd expect new that there'd yeah. be. N basically, what I'm getting at yeah, here yeah. is that the the condition of these bodies. Mm -hmm. um, this maybe is a bit, um, you know, uh, gruesome. Yeah. Is the best evidence for the use of explosives? Really? Because the you explosives have, you have 1,200 bodies vaporized would be able to have the force to vaporize the people were blown up by they were blown these, to bits and they wouldn't have been done by just the collapse of the building as they're trying to think tell about us it. it would happen yeah right the yeah. more you think about it the less uh, likely they'd be crushed that it they'd been. be at the base of the building yeah right you know right, 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 um, right, right, they wouldn't right. be uh, police uh, i read a police diary mm -hmm. where this gentleman is talking about coming to the building com uh, coming to the world trade center he's crossing chamber he's right I cross Chamber Street and I'm moving, and you, you yeah. know, for those of us familiar with the streets, you know, yeah. oh, he's still yeah. quite a ways away. Right. And he says, I noticed uh, uh, sneakers and clothing strewn on fire escapes, blocks away. Yeah. Okay. Devoid of bodies. Yeah. Hmm, blown out there. What kind of weirdness is that? Right. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Explosives. Uh huh. The, the, really? the, the buildings were exploded, uh -huh. and the, uh, the the final medical examiner's reports. You have twelve identify visually identifiable bodies. Twelve. My God. Right, and if you really want to get specific yeah. about yeah. it, these are probably the, some of the people that jumped. Uh huh. So the people that remain in this building. So suffice he, to say, yeah. initially when I saw that, I didn't. It didn't make much sense to right. me that the way the buildings went down and so forth. And I, and I went there as I said, I saw nothing but dust. It was there were some questions in my mind, like, wow, this is strange. Mm -hmm. But you know, like everyone else, it was very traumatic. Yeah. So little by little, I started to check the web, and there were people out there doing investigations. Some people early on were involved. A, <coughs> a couple of years ago, because I have access to, to uh, the, the, the some of the rooms at St. Mark's, yeah. we started a program every Sunday night where yeah, we I showed know. films, yeah. brought in resources, uh, contacted people around the st city, around the state, around the country uh -huh. who were involved in this, and we provided a venue for a weekly sharing of information and films and, bi and so on and so forth around 9-11 truth. And there's been an increasing amount of evidence that comes from all sides. Because of the, 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 the speed of communication, yeah, right. um, there, there are now a dozen credible, watchable films, uh -huh. an Who's equal changed? number of very, very yeah. powerful, well-researched, important books with yeah. important blurbs from important uh, intellectuals yeah, and so growing, forth and so on. Growing, it's yeah. growing. Yeah. There's a 911 scholars uh, scholars for truth they were uh, website. Chicago? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. um, there's there's a there's a lot of stuff now that's out there. Yeah. Any reasonable person, there's a, at least a dozen different points of entry, uh -huh. forewarnings, uh -huh. um, dozens of forewarnings uh, uh, that came in. Uh -huh. um, uh, you know, w World Trade Center 7, how did uh -huh. this building go down? Yeah. How did these two, World Trade Center 1 and 2, collapse? What, mm -hmm. what was going on there? Fuel uh -huh. had never brought down steel frame buildings in the history of steel frame buildings. That's right. What's going on there? They burned the 48 economics. hours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's all these profit making going on the, the, the 9th, the 10th, and the, and the morning of the 11th. All sorts of machinations going on. Uh -huh. People who were told not to go to work that day. Yeah. Ashcroft wouldn't take a plane. Uh -huh. I mean, there's all this stuff that's going on. No matter how you come at it, the BBC uh -huh. reports that five or some of that uh, number of, of hijackers, so-called hijackers, are still alive. The, the really? American people have been sold an, uh, an incredible bill of goods around 9-11. Okay, right. And, and this you're going to bring out. And this oh is yeah. the fifth anniversary coming. There's yeah. a lot of events. So the five years has yeah. afforded us time for this to stuff to really percolate. To, 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 you know, like yeah. kind of get rid of all the disinformation, the, the wacko stuff. Yeah. You know, you know, some of the wacko stuff is, in fact, you know, mm. uh, well-informed disinformation coming yeah. from those who don't want the truth to come out. All right. So That's you get all of that. Yeah. Deal with, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. No, yeah. the government's story is, the, is a conspiracy theory. Yeah. 
And they're, and we're they're, just critiquing what they're giving us yeah. and saying, this doesn't square. And huge percentages of the American population are now voting on the side of because there, there should be a reopening of the investigation, uh, a full-fledged People are, of the are, are utilizing, this 50, is the, the point about truth. Of and, the population right. of the United States are saying this that This is now. the point I was making before. Now, how can it be, As people yeah. uh, uh, you utilize a critical consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, Herbert Marcuse once said in a yeah. talk that I saw him, he's, yeah. uh, uh, you know, we asked him a question and he, he gave some answer which I don't recall but at the end of it he said in the final analysis the uh, the, the enemy of fascism is reason uh, yes right reason. and people are utilizing their their critical consciousness uh -huh. reason uh -huh. we have to just look at this stuff we have mm -hmm. to get away from from the trauma they're using that trauma uh -huh. and that fear and uh -huh. that panic uh -huh. to, to push the big lie okay the big lie these we're people did it we're going to go bomb those people over in Saudi or right. in, uh, in uh, Afghanistan we'll although they admitted that the 19 guys yeah. that they put yeah. out there were right. from Saudi Arabia right, but right, that right. that was lost on the public right no Hussein and Al Qaeda yeah right. that's fallen oh Regime. they have weapons of mass destruction that they've Regime. lied about everything yeah, right. they've lied about 9-11 yeah. and they've made a big crapshoot over there and they've come up with snake eyes it's, I mean, it's, it's a big mess. It's, it's an obscenity. An, and what about the thing then? You take somebody as uh, you know reputable on the left, let's say as uh, Noam Chomsky, mm -hmm. and he'll take a position and he'll say, "Well, I understand about the 9/11 conspiracy theory, but it just can't be because there's no way they could have tried to do something like that without knowing." they were going to be caught at it because there'd be too many things they'd trip over. So it's absurd it's at the, uh, it's, it's so facto absurd. People, but he takes that position. It's disingenuous. And there are many people that do not, uh, you're talking this thing, and there are many people who are critical of the system, and that's <coughs> in the traditional way, who I do not want to open it. I right. saw Jeff I don't, Cohen I don't, the other night. I don't like he to criticize the individual uh, people who don't. Well, let's you know, criticize as those but in who general, are concerned with social justice and these questions about, you know, the it's inappropriate... It's disingenuous and, and so Why on. is there that strong attitude on the part of so many people, let's say, just of the left, let's just say that way, and everything, to the idea that there was an involvement by the government in this process? I mean, your guess is as good as mine. No, I'm I can, asking I what can you list think. a few you possibilities. Think, yeah, what are it ranges from opportunism, fear, um, they don't want to be shot, or, or they're, they're too public, uh, too high figure. Um, they're Im implicated in some way uh -huh. um, in some of this. They're, the grant, their grants are, uh, would be jeopardized. You uh, think we've become so corrupt? Um, you know, they, yeah. Yeah. people get invested in the, in the system in yeah. various ways. It's hard to know. Or maybe it's hard to know how any rational this would be too disruptive of a listen. They're uh, still buying the single bu bullet theory with yeah. with Oswald. Well, you they're know? saying I mean, it would be all right. They could. It's and absurd. Then you have JFK and you've got the Oliver Stone. You got the conspiracy, the Grassy Knoll, Grassy Knoll, and you got. But they're they're saying that this thing, if it were to come to be the case, it would be so disruptive of the national psyche that it would bring utter chaos and the society could not function if this were coming to be well I truth. say that it this would be so upsetting that we can't allow that to happen right. because we got to keep the people in the dark a little bit right because there's something behind it and there's gonna be something to emerge out of that like they did lie to get into the wars and so I forth. think to, so it's a continuation to suggest, of that to suggest that the truth will, will bring about a certain will bring chaos or the truth will will somehow um, become an obstacle well, to the bloodletting in Iraq I say bring it on. Oh, oh, I right. say let's have more chaos. Yeah, but they're, they're going to be saying, well, I'm just trying to think what they would say. They would say is you can't let, there are people in positions of responsibility who, let's say, know all these things. Mm -hmm. There was Gulf of Tonkin. There was things, they know these things, but there's larger issues involved than the simple thing that the people, dear things that they are, trying to get at the truth or something. But the truth will not set you free. The truth will set loose a, uh, a chaotic system that will bring the d demise of the whole social order. Uh, that I kind of an argument uh, you, that is irresponsible. You can't use certain language on, on TV, but I think that's so much BS. Uh -huh. I think yeah. it's, it's a you sellout. You can use BS even it's here an, on a morning show. It's an opportunistic show. Yeah. thing. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's disingenuous. Mm -hmm. um, to mm -hmm. The standard thing, well, how could uh, this conspiracy have, uh, on the part of the government, if you say it's, a, you know, the elements within the DOD, Department of Defense, and, mm -hmm. the, and the intelligence uh, uh, apparatus, how could they have kept this secret? Yeah, that's what... How did they the keep the Manhattan Project secret? Or did. look at it the other way. If Al Qaeda carried it out, how did they keep it secret? See, the Manhattan Project. You no, know, that's below. You, you no, know, but the it, idea again, that we're you not keep the Manhattan Project secret because you had to keep it secret and you wouldn't want it out. Be, you know, that's not. 
there are secrets that are kept they have confidentiality they have stamps top secret they have all this kind of right. stuff in order to keep it so you can't have pure opaqueness or, or pure no, that, or that's, all fine, that's all fine and dandy because in, it, in will, the it, will, it will somehow threaten the social fabric right. the political social what's fabric what's threatening in the social way, fabric right now is uh, the fact that there is a terrorist uh, um, uh, apparatus that is loose within the government of the US that there's a terrorist apparatus there that is about fomenting terrorism not only at home mm -hmm. but in places like Iraq let me ask you is it a that's the apparatus that has to be uh, exposed okay and that's the chaos well, that needs to be ended okay and well, anything anything that that goes to saying well we sanctioned that status quo and we allow for the destruction and and the uh, murder of 3,000 of our own citizens because there's a, some sort of higher value. Yeah. Well, that there would is so be, much of a, that's, that's a rationalization for murder. It, yeah, let's try and think it through And people who support that are yeah. disingenuous. They're bought into it well, in some way. Well, let me talk about it. There's two different things. One is that we've got a cabal, a little coup d'etat that's been done by a group of, uh, let's call them neocon, uh, absur uh, absurdly radical, off the wall. They used to call them the crazies in the old days when they were around and thinking David well, You have murdered. elements in the, olig in the oligarchy yeah. You have elements in the, in the munitions industry. Yeah, but let me make the point, okay? So that you, is it, is it a matter of that, and then like we had in Germany a Nazi party, they took over and they wrecked havoc and that kind of thing, but then it wasn't, uh, uh, what I'm getting at is, is it the Republican Party or the neocon Q that run everything, that have now done a thing, or is it the system itself? It's both. Now, wait, is the, so if you think it's not the system itself. The system itself is basically good. The Constitution of the United States of America, the Declaration of Independence, the George Washington did the cherry tree and told so, yeah. and all these kind of narratives we live by, that that system is basically good. Yeah, so we are good, and now we've got a bunch of bad guys. We had McCarthy, remember how it got off mm -hmm. base there, COINTELPRO, Pro, all that kind of stuff? Right. We had that, but that the system is good, and if we just get rid of the people that are the bad guys who did this bad thing, went over the top, we'll be able to do it. And let's say we're something called the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. And if we get us in, we'll be the good ones that'll serve the interests of the whole. And we cannot allow the very system, if it is a systems problem, it's a larger system, you can't allow that kind of con uh, chaos because there will be anarchy and we will not be able to have a society that can function and that's the larger good against which you would have to hide the truth that you're trying to make out. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? No, I understand and what you're saying. there are people in that position. Well, I would what say. I would say is that the, the, uh, the, the, the system, as you're defining it, because uh, when you said system, I was thinking the economic system. Well, I do too. System. I think everything's economic. But in yeah. terms of the, the, uh, the, the Constitution and the... And the uh, and, um, and these other the whole uh, order. Yeah. these other the uh, world this, order the, the American discourse yeah. and so on. I think that, that that can withstand. That is designed to withstand exactly this kind of truth that we're talking about. Have we ever had such a test no. before? No. I'm not no. suggesting okay. that 9-11 yeah. truth would not bring about some kind of constitutional no, no, crisis no, not because just it will. The We've had constitutional crises before, but this would bring on something that would be so disruptive that it would rend the society. Yeah, and uh, that's what I'm that's referring what I'm to as an to apocalyptic not, peace. Not beyond just a, uh, I mean, there are some Republicans who thought it was going to be the end of the world when Nixon lost to Kennedy, you know, that right. kind of thing. That kind of thing. It changed. you got to get the we good guys in. We need a revolution in values. A we need to have, the, the thing is, even those who are trying to restore or make work the system that we've inherited and so forth, that that is appropriately perhaps being questioned by the requirements of the zeitgeist, because even that side of things, the responsible other op op loyal right. opposition does not have a vision that is relative. And so you're talking about not just that kind of a change political that we've had throughout time, when one group comes in, so yeah. you're talking about questioning the whole system by which exactly. the planet is operating, yeah. and that's something they don't have a vision to address. Right. So they see it like Louis the Sixteenth in the Versailles Palace when they're setting up the guillotine in the yard. We're not talking about I'm shifting saying? the, the chairs on the Titanic. Exactly. Here. That's what I'm trying to say. This is, uh, this That's is why some people are going to object to it from a sense of a higher responsibility. Let's try and get the republic in order. Let's try and make some changes or do some deck shifting or something. Yeah, but do you understand it, what I'm trying to no, say? No, I do, but it's so yeah. it becomes a... Uh, 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 Byzantine. It becomes a sanction for the status quo in the end. Yeah. Because when, you, when, the, when the rubber hits the road, mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about 9-11 truth 
for example. Uh -huh. um, you know, well, we don't, we can't expose this because it'll be too disruptive. Exactly. We can't say that the the, the CIA and the and the Pentagon were implicated in the assassination of a president in 1963, because which they clearly were. Because right? we can't say that. It would well, be too disruptive. Well, you so what do we get? We get another 25 years uh -huh. of uh, of militarist bloodletting right, right. on the for, in the interests of the oil companies and the munitions well, industries. Well, that, no, that, if I may, Frank, it's, that's it's the too justification narrow. for that's murder. Too, that's too narrow. That's too narrow. Like a political interest, the oil barons, and that's it. What it is is a chance to keep the republic in a form where it can get itself right with the world. It's not now. The basic principles, the institutions are. Even if remember, that, remember even if the, that were true, you know, we have now achieved that, that moment. About that. Yeah. Even if even if that were true then. Mm -hmm. Okay, back mm -hmm. in the days of JFK, well, we can't expose this now because it'd be too disruptive. Mm -hmm. We're no longer there. Mm -hmm. We're at a critical moment right now. I agree with you, but I think where the critical we have moment to, is very, very we large. We have to suck it up, yeah. and we have to we have to face the fact that there is nothing more important right now than dealing with the truth of the, of, of the murders that took place down at the World Trade Center and who perpetuated and brought about that crime. What if that's going to usher in utter chaos? We have utter chaos. No, 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 we don't have utter chaos. The What's happening in Baghdad the is Baghdad, utter chaos. The buses run, the things run, things work, there's a system that works, it's there. What if we oh, no, it works remember? all right. There's yeah. an apparatus of, of death. It's a machinery of death. Well, okay, you see... Uh, but we but have to... But we have to put it like Mario Savio said. We have to put our I bodies, bodies in on that the machine. In <laughs> yeah. that machine, and yeah. we have to stop that machine. Yeah, Mario Savio was great. The free speech movement, that kind it, of thing. This all is that the kind time. Of, yeah. Well, we had the same kind of thing at the time of Vietnam, and then on their side, they were saying then that, uh, that we're getting a little bit aside because something's ha even at the time of Vietnam. There, there are things that have changed since then, but they they said that if they fall in uh, Vietnam, remember. Well, they killed 58 million, thousand of our boys and women in our uniform and four million East Southeast Asians for which nobody ever went in the dock. Right. For that. And they just said it was a mistake. Right. We made a mistake. <laughs> you know. Exactly. But they said we got to do it there. But don't forget and the military industrial complex made a lot of money. Oh, yeah. I know. I understand that. And then they, they, they said they it's going to, if it weapons. goes to Vietnam, then Thailand's going to go. It's going to be a thing. They're going to be a new, they're going to be just in about Asia. selling weapons. They're going to be about, they're going to, no, but if they win, the communists win. Remember the big threat of the communists? You had big red amoeba coming out from the Eurasian landmass and it was commies. It oh, was sure. commies then that they were really no, in. commies and the missile gap. And the missile gap. They were going to get all this stuff. But they had an existential, we've got to do it. I saw, uh, what's his name, Holbrook on the other day. There's absolutely no question that we have to do it. It is a crucial interest that we have. He was talking about Lebanon, for instance, and Hezbollah and what's going on in Nezrallah and all that kind of stuff and the support of Israel. But that's the thing. It's absolutely essential because we have a value. We are legitimate. Our system, that system is more important than the verities of the political leadership that might make a little mistake. But the system we have is historically legitimate. We're bringing democracy to the world. We're bringing We're murder. the hope of the world. We're bringing bloodletting. But they believe that. They can believe whatever they want. And What's the loyal objectively the, uh, in front of everyone is the fact that the oil industries and the munici and munitions industries mm -hmm. With their their uh, they have a military uh, base in the Middle East and it's named called Israel. Yeah, that's been and, and propped up and and you know it, despite the best intentions and the best and the real interests of the of the Israeli people uh -huh. has been propped up to act as a proxy for for or maybe U.S. The militarism may incorporated. Or maybe the Zionists were a big mistake in terms of the broader Judaic historical unfolding. They made a mistake. Well, we made a mistake in Vietnam. They maybe made a mistake there, but we're committed to that. And they got 200 atomic bombs, and they got a narrative they're built into. And there's pressure being put on them now. And we're saying, why doesn't the world just understand we're bringing you a good world? We are the leader. It's like the white man's burden. Remember? Well, what and I the colonial attitude. What's happening? The world. I think. And we don't have a vision that's relative to what the world needs, or is it, it <laughs> not at either all. in the name of justice or even in the name of efficiency. It is so inefficient to have the in uh, you know the system that doesn't allow so many of the people to survive and thrive right. which we have the capability of providing it is uh, they don't have the vision is what i'm trying it's to say th and where is the vision coming from and where is the critique from the intellectuals that's relevant to that larger issue it's not it's not any different there than here they're mm. not interested in exporting democracy to just the same way they're not interested in having democracy function at home mm -hmm. 
it's a total hype it's hypocrisy if they were interested in having democracy at home they wouldn't be rigging elections at home they're rigging elections at home they're they're mouthing about exporting democracy that is a big sham that is a lie herbal said big lie if you're going to lie make a big lie it's a big lie it's that and that america uh, the beautiful the city on the shining hill is a big lie well what i'm saying is that what through the vantage point of 9-11 truth yeah okay as a linchpin Mm -hmm. begins to generalize the struggle for truth Uh the truth of 9-11 puts the lie to the entire system wait a minute the entire system by which planet earth operates you're talking about the entire the entire uh, are you talking uh, about social and economic system which is okay let's back it up america incorporated okay the more comprehensive you get the more you can deal with the systems and so forth do you have some sort of an idea of the evolution uh this is all taking place within the larger evolutionary context that includes 200,000 years of human existence and uh, 14, 13.7 billion years of this uh, Big Bang and 4 billion years of this Earth. So it's a larger context. So this system that's in place now, the way of socially organizing and so forth, is out of touch. It's not just the American system. It's not just the oil barons. That the system of understanding the evolution of consciousness and what's taking place in a large, comprehensive tableau in the evolution of consciousness or life process in this part of the universe is out of sync with what's required it's in contra- we're coming to a new thing omega the point system is in contradiction chardin with the forces speak, of life chardin used to spoke about convergence he used to speak about the omega point there was a point right. of convergence and transformation coming out of two hundred thousand years of human history do you think we may be coming to that I, sort I of a point? I think that's a good way to put it. Is it? Well, that's yeah. a very huge thing. I think that's, that's a, a very good way huge to put thing. It. That and being having it's a vision, huge, but where it's, are it's we very getting, human. Where are we getting the vision of that kind of transformation on the positive side right. if from the intellectual communities, other than pointing at the nefariousness of those who are running things now without a vision? Where is the countervailing vision coming from of an alternative that could subsume right. that outdated ancient regime system that's it's in control? It's coming from people who are involved in the struggle for truth, who are able to see beyond the immediate critique and begin to envision what the possibilities are beyond. Where are they that are seeing that? I mean, I, if I may, okay? I see a lot of 9-11 truth. It's mostly pointing at the nefariousness right. of the current system. Oh, no, I think I'm you're right. I'm saying is, where is the opposite of that? We, that's I mean, not the opposite, need. or the, the appropriate uh, uh, understanding of what's going on, or narrative, a comprehensive right. narrative of what's going on, maybe even on to spiritual things like consciousness. Yeah. Maybe we're transcending scarcity. Yeah. Uh, 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 no, I think it, this that, is that, happening. That's something that has not happened in history. I think this is happening. And uh, maybe we're coming into a new relate. Maybe we're speciating. We're coming into a new relationship to the uh, universal mind or an a priori mysterious mm-hmm. universal mind or something. Yeah. But where is that le- coming from? Because you've studied spiritually and well, so forth. Couldn't it be put in that kind of a context to get a sense of understanding of an alternative rather than just a projection of blame for the people yeah. who are ill? appropriate and then it was within which those people could in the end be cons- uh, su- subsumed with a system that the future either requires or now allows I think that in there a are those new way. There are know? those groups that are Where out are there. Where are they? Who are they? Where are our leaders? Where's Voltaire? Where are the intellectual well, leaders that provide an alternative? I think what's happened is that those people who are able to perceive and envision alternatives um, you know on a global plane um, who are spiritually oriented and so forth have be, are, are separate from those people who are involved in the kind of critical day-to-day, you know, deconstructing of the evil, right? You know, delineating the evil. Well, it might be so good if they could get together. We need to get them together. We need, to, yeah, right. In the 9/11 movement, uh-huh. there is some of that happening, yeah. Because people in the 9/11 movement now who have begun to realize, hey, this 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 uh, this big lie around 9/11 uh-huh. is now beginning to to uh, to, to fall apart. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. People yeah. are beginning to realize yeah. that, hey, Rumsfeld sitting in the Pentagon the morning of 9-11, mm-hmm. sitting on the other side of the Pentagon, uh-huh. he said at 8 a.m. breakfast, mm-hmm. and the, 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 the uh, World Trade Center 1 is hit, uh, the first tower is hit. Is that was he reading about the gold? He's at he's 8, 8 a.m. Yeah. No, no, no. He's, oh. This is Rumsfeld, Secretary oh. of Defense, oh, president, who is yeah. charged with the shoot-down order. He's yeah. the guy that's supposed to be... Yeah, and it all transferred over to him. So he, just a couple weeks right, before. A couple weeks before, he's really the guy. Something he comes in, he says, hey, they hit the first novel. tower. He yeah. keeps on talking. Yeah. He's on the other side of the Pentagon. Yeah. It hits the second tower. He keeps on talking. Yeah. 
Then the the the, 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 the order still 40 the minute, stand down order forty still, minute yeah. lag right, time right, there, right. and the plane is on the way to the Pentagon. Uh -huh. They don't even evacuate the Pentagon, uh -huh. right? Know, yeah. They they lost it. Uh. Uh, NORAD they couldn't find it, and so on uh. and so forth. Mm -hmm. Hits again. He comes running out and is going to save people, and yeah. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, as people begin to understand the the, 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 the lie, yeah, the absurdity the of 9/11 yeah. yeah. truth, and the begin the absurdity to of their 9/11 of their truth. Of their <laughs> truth. Within the 9-11 movement now, the, the people are seeing, yeah, this is starting to come out. It's starting to break. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got five days coming up beginning on the 7th. You do. We want to let them know about that for sure. Within yeah. the 9-11 truth movement, right. people now raising up, let's assume this breaks. Mm -hmm. It's, like it's water, looking like it's going it to break. It may be the water breaks We need to pregnancy. be prepared yeah. with the vision yeah. for where this goes. That's what I'm asking. Where that's, is it? In now the 9-11 have, movement, that's yeah. starting to happen is now. Is it now? Who? People yeah. are talking about... Okay. We um, have a long tradition of socialist thinking, for instance. We have well, a long it's not vision. only that, but they're, talking, they're thinking more specifically, okay. more, more immediately, mm -hmm. in terms of the, the nature of the... Uh, of the um, we need trauma the, centers. The kind of uh, the, the judicial aspects of how are we going to get justice here? Who's going to try these people? Uh, yeah, that's right. We, what we're, is we're not going to be an in international what criminal court. What kind of constitutional we don't want crisis to is this going to bring about? Right, exactly. People exactly. the other day I spoke to. You can't even get impeachment. Well, this is what they. Yeah, it's coming. To, to I, zero in tonight. right on that point. I'm going in tonight to see about impeachment. They came yeah. to me and throwing. said, um, look, the Congress goes Democrat. Mm -hmm. Conyers becomes head of the Judiciary Committee. That's going to happen. An that impeachment happen. proceeding begins. I was they told. They can subpoena. They can subpoena. I was told them. by people who were involved in mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. that the 9/11 Truth movement, mm -hmm. uh, the, the the case for 9/11 Truth, mm -hmm. becomes central within the impeachment proceedings. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So okay. what we're looking at here is is a process mm -hmm. that it will, from what I was getting at before, mm -hmm. is going to open up, hopefully. Mm -hmm. In terms yeah. of you, what you were saying, yeah. bring on the chaos, yeah. bring it on. Uh -huh. It's like Karl Barth once said uh, at, yeah. a the, at a meeting of theologians yeah. uh, back yeah. in the 40s. Yeah. You know, well, you talk about the apocalypse, so, you know, what, what, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> okay. Well, that's. <laughs> but I talk yeah. about an apocalypse of yeah. peace. Yeah. Because you know, this is the yeah. thing, when the right, the mm -hmm. Christian right, and so on. I'm shifting yeah. a bit here. Yeah. Gets into this whole thing about the apocalypse, and uh, you know, we. That's a rationalization for the current uh, pr uh, apparatus in the Mideast. Yeah, it's revelation. Well, Israel John, has to go yeah. through this trial, and Armageddon, it's going to be Armageddon yeah. and all yeah. this kind of thing. The rapture, don't forget. What they're really thousand, afraid of yeah. is an apocalypse of peace. Uh-huh. Well, that might well That's be. what they're really afraid the of. The people and are vested in the old system are worried that you, if you're going to have something new, it should be some hints of what that new would be. Well, that that's what we, no, wait a minute, if we I need may. to articulate Not that. only the fact that those like the misera, the, the, the people who make the revolution are being liberated the masses of the world, maybe 80% of the world that are ill-served, and the trends are not well to being able to be well-served, and they've never been well-served. Yeah. They've always been wallowing around in the mud but and everything. But if you have a thing where there's going to be a qualitative change from a system that keeps the lights on and that kind of thing, right. there ought to be some hints of what that alternative would be if following upon yeah. the shock waves of okay. having shown that the old system is out of state. This, out of this sync. is this is this is and uh, that might include also the state of Israel. This Maybe is true. that might be part of the uh, of formula course. by which a real shock wave everybody will come back sits to the arrogance of power. Everybody of the sits around the table and mm -hmm. works it out. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got but a place at the table. Why aren't Jesus, we working uh, was, that uh, out it, now? That's what Jesus did. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. We get the tax collectors and the poor everybody gets to sit down at the table and work mm -hmm. it out. The thing is is I don't I'm not lacking in confidence in, in the ability of of, of humankind to work that out. alternative way to work things out? You don't Maintaining think? the lie is a lot harder than allowing for truth. No, I'm People not, I'm are not, naturally right, predisposed Frank. to cooperate well and, and care for each other. All well and good, but we'll what work I'm, that out. There's right. an unlimited now, imaginary oh, imagination and potential. I'm not blaming it about how they're putting the truth, they're blocking the truth. That's what they're doing. That we know all that. What I'm talking about is where is the alternative? Is it the Democratic Party? No, 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 It's way beyond the Democratic Party. Is it then if the communists take over, or no, is it if the Marxist that. socialists That's take all over, archaic. or if it's the anarchists? Where is the theory? frame by which this plan is going to operate if the system that is being trashed, let's say, this is, is going to saying. be put down. And where are the people who are putting a system that is an alternative that is right. both realistic and also visionarily able to help us right. realize this it? Is what where I was, are this is what our I was intellectual saying. leaders Right. Well, this is what I was getting order. at, is that the, uh, the uh, elements of that vision, right, mm -hmm. the global vision, are there. Where? Who? In different where? places. 
No, I'm there, asking you, what's the website? Where do we go? Where is it being laid out well? There are spiritual... Rather than just pointing met, at the eagles. No, I met with a group the other day that's okay. involved in... Uh, and, and the, the, the uh, Saxes people, the, the people fighting oh. global poverty. There are people who are in, have global vision, um, different types of uh, visionary uh, nonviolent uh, training programs uh -huh. and anti-conflict uh, training things. And so mm. There are a lot of groups out there. Well, I think, they're yeah. separate uh -huh. from the groups that are activists and delineating Maybe the they shouldn't be separate. Right. So yeah. that's the first yeah. thing. But more generally, uh -huh. all right, mm -hmm. maintaining the lie and maintaining the chaos of the evil mm -hmm. is much harder to do then it will be to reconstruct right. a world based on humanity, love, justice, and care for each other. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's a lot easier. Yeah. You think so? Yeah, because oh. that's what we're about. Oh. We're functioning right now in wow. a way that is not natural, in a okay. way that is, a, is, okay. is opposed to our better, uh, our better selves. Our better angel. It's maintained through force. Yeah. Once that is moved out of the way and people are allowed to, to be, be their own sweet self. Right. I don't. I, I agree I'm, with I'm you. That totally, would be nice, but I'm just the, saying. The humans, we're need I'm always <laughs> amazed at the potential that, that people show, yeah, right, for the, their individual and yeah. a group level when uh, they're given the opportunity yeah. to, to to do stuff. Yeah. Construct things rather than destruct. Right. Right. I, well, we can solve in a week's time. Seven days. Uh, we'll rest on the Sabbath. <laughs> all right. We'll have pe p the poor will will have plenty to eat. Well, people will be educated. All right. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll regroove all those, those evil people that need regrooving. <laughs> regroove, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was the fire sign theater. Oh, was that fire sign? I remember fire sign. I don't remember regroove. Oh, yes. They it's did. like all cutting people. a new record, You don't have right? to put them up against yeah, the wall. Uh, yeah. You regroove Well, them. I think ultimately the real test is going to be if you come up with an alternative, the alternative is not only going to be liberating the masses. The real challenge is going to be, it seems to me, in the, in, there's levels of, uh, of, of challenge. And the real challenge is one where you're going to come up with a system that's so comprehensively appropriate to the evolution of universal consciousness in a liberating way within an ecological context that will be not only transformative and liberating of the masses of the people who have been so screwed over by our system coming out of history, but will also be so comprehensively appropriate as to be able to be understood by those responsible for the historically inherited pattern in the end. They right. will be a lagging indicator because they are conservative anchor to the history out of which we're emerging, and that would be the hope of what this whole 9-11 truth movement Precisely. might be. We might make this con get over toward the convergence point and the mega point yeah. that Mr. I think Chardin the 9-11 truth movement about. has, it may sound like it's over, over doing it, hmm. but it, it's so... It's a spark. It's a spark. We got to say goodbye, Frank, because okay. we're running out of time. There's an ad in the town in the Wall Street, yeah, in the Wall Street week's, Journal. This week's Village in Voice. Village Voice. Um, September 7th through mm -hmm. the 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, check out New run York, graphics, New York 911.org uh -huh. um, to get details. It's a whole series of events, films, yeah. speakers, uh, all towards deconstructing the official cover story for 9-11 right. uh -huh. and get at the truth and bring those uh, the perpetrators of the crime to justice. Okay, and also perhaps usher in a new kind of order that we can begin to get a vision a of liberating. And one that would be able to, in the end, if it's non-zero sum, might be able to be open to where everyone will be able to be involved in that at the end, but it's going to be a hard sell with a want. lot of people you know, who have a stake in the Some of us call it heaven on earth. All right, fine. And uh, thanks, Frank. It's really a pleasure. Your pleasure to have this perception. We're coming back again tomorrow. Tune in. We're coming back tomorrow. And once again, thanks. We'll be there.